Hello, hello, hello. I'm back. What does happen to the human body when someone is stressed, when someone is anxious and thinking about all these things that could potentially happen from coronavirus? Yeah, so um, I hope that your audience might indulge the both of us in a little discussion of um, the nervous system, yeah. which I think is important for us to think about every day, but it's something that um, we at many times take for granted. So we have this underlying nervous system in our body. It's called the autonomic nervous system. It has these two different sides. I like to think of them as like the yin and the yang. Yeah. And uh, it's the sympathetic is the fight or flight system that goes into um, effect when we are in encountered with something um, frightening or scary or fearful. Um, and it's a good response actually for our body because it prepares us for, um, uh, for, for battle, right? So if we're being chased by a bear, we our heart rate increases, right? Like the, the dilate, the, our pupils change size and the blood rushes away from our um, intestines because we don't need to be digesting food. We need that blood to be in our heart and our lungs. We need to get away from that bear. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the flip side of that is, so we were talking, we just talked about the parasympathetic and now the flip side of that is this, is the, or we just talked about the sympathetic. Now we're talking about the parasympathetic, uh, which is the balance. And, you know, that's the system that's often thought of as um, rest and digest. So we're walking around, you know, most of the day trying to keep a good balance between those two. And unfortunately, in conditions of stress and conditions of chronic stress, that sympathetic system is in overdrive. It's yeah. too active. And the effects of that on our body, um, we could do a whole, you know, a whole separate webcast on that, but um, they lead to chronic disease. Chronic stress leads to chronic disease, and um, we need to find a, a way of finding a good, a good balance to those two. And what are some of those sort of sympathetic symptoms, sympathetic nervous system symptoms that manifest during stress? Like, what might someone be feeling that, you know, as we call them psychosomatic symptoms? What, what might that be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's what uh, I like to ask my patients a lot of times is, that, you know, what is, I will actually ask them, what, what does it feel like for you? Like when you tell me that you're anxious, what does that feel like to you? Um, does that mean your heart is racing? Um, does that mean that you um, need to withdraw? Um, does that mean that you need to go and, you know, take a nap? Um, what is it, is your, your stomach sink? Do your, does your, 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 do your bowels become irregular? Um, yeah. The effects can be different on, on each of us, even though our bodies have a similar setup, um, they thought, you know, we're all affected by anxiety and by stress in, in different ways. But I would say if you're talking just specifically about the nervous system, right? So our heart rate is going to go up and our blood pressure, in, you know, our blood, blood pressure increases because we kind of, we do yeah. this. Um, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Because I think it's important for everyone listening to hear this, which is stress and the signs and symptoms of stress can be different in different people. So, you know, some people, like you said, they may have the runs, their bowels get very gurgly and suddenly they have diarrhea, they, the heart racing, the panic attack that we hear about, that sense of doom or the shortness of breath that came out of nowhere. And I think it's important for us to notice, given some of those symptoms are also what we've been telling people are signs and symptoms of coronavirus infection. That's a great point. You know, shortness of breath, possible nausea, possible vomiting, uh, heart racing, not so much, but definitely shortness of breath, etc. And so I think some people, as you get anxious or what people call hypochondrosis, uh, it might start thinking, oh my God, is this a symptom? Am I having coronavirus? And that's your whole stress level rising as well. And so I think it's important to know yourself, know what might be your signs and symptoms of a stress attack or a panic attack or a activation of your sympathetic nervous system. Um, so that, that's really helpful. And the same goes for children. Be mindful of that within your family. And I would say, Cindy, you know, I'm really glad that you mentioned that because I 
did another one of these lives this morning, although I think it was my first one and I maybe just was talking to myself the whole time. Um, <laughs> but we're, get, we're gonna get better at these. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the symptoms, if you look at the, the different uh, criteria for making a diagnosis, you know, they list on their gastrointestinal 10%. Yeah, well, for, uh, for COVID-19, right? For COVID, yeah. yeah. And so I'm thinking to myself, well, many people, when they get sick, they get anxious and they yeah. end up having, I would imagine that maybe 10% of us are anxious mm -hmm. and 10% of us are going to have any GI symptoms when we get sick. Yeah. So if you latch on to that symptom and you're an anxious person and you automatically start thinking, well, now I'm sick, I've got some kind yeah. of gastrointestinal disturbance. Um, it just snowballs and so so I think you know what we'll talk about at some point um, you know together tonight is how do we manage that how do you manage that because that's going to be important it's going to be important and um, you know so we talked about the nervous system what other systems might be affected during stress yeah that's um, that's that's a great a great question I mean I think um, let's talk about the immune system for example I mean that's a very pertinent one so um, I, I just want to uh, uh, mention a book that, um, that uh, I found really helpful when, when talking about um, uh, stress in our body. It's called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. And it's kind of an interesting book. I, both Cindy and I are not getting any money from plugging this book. And in fact, no, we don't even know the people who put it together. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, 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 a pretty, um, it's, a, it's a pretty dense book. But what they talk about is, um, you know, going back to this whole stress response, animals and zebras, for example, you know, when they get scared, they get this sympathetic fight or flight response, and then they just, they go back to it. Yeah. And they're able to bring themselves back to uh, back to homeostasis, back to normal. But these days, especially with what's happening with the coronavirus, there's no escape to this stress response. Yeah. So we're getting text messages, we're seeing a news update, the president's on television, there's all these things are happening with stuck in traffic. And then I'm even talking about just before the coronavirus happened, not, not you know, to mention now. Um, but but the problem that you know so the, these animals have this response they go right back down to normal but we are spending way too much time yeah. in the stress response we're getting yeah, like, in stress exactly and so what they talk about in this book is that the body is um you know we want our bodies when we become stressed to become stronger to the immune response to improve right because yes. if we're stressed we want our bodies to to uh, do the job for us uh, but if you look at the graph if you look at what happens if you know in the short term yes the immune system responds and it becomes stronger but in situations of chronic stress our immune system weakens yes Yes. And this is research that goes back, you know, tens and tens of years. So, so I think, um, you know, when you ask, you know, what other symptoms are 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 affected? Uh, I mean, right now, this this, you know, it, what we're going through right now, thinking about the immune system, is even more reason why we need to be helping ourselves to get stress back down to. Um, control levels. Indeed, I think that's super important because I further just want to reiterate what Dr. Holden is saying, which is true. A chronically stressed person's immune system weakens, and it's for a variety of reasons, but there's an interplay between hormones, your immune system, hormones, your fight or flight response, hormones, and sleep. And of course, if all of those things start becoming disordered or irregular, then all stop working the way they're supposed to. It's why, for example, if someone's really in a stressful job even, or being bullied at work, we know their immune system weakens as a response to all of that stress and bullying, even at work. Um, they're more prone to infections and illnesses because they're stressed. And so that's, again, you're right. That's why we're going to talk now about how we affect and change stress levels and impact it so that we can spare ourselves the potential worsening of our, even our immune response to uh, any infection, but even COVID-19.